When did so when you heard Spike eighty, you know the the, the, uh, the name that was used. I mean, did that written you know immediately kind of sound yeah. an alarm? Yes, absolutely. Um, as a weed science researcher, I've studied a number of different herbicides, including Spike eighty DF, uh, the active ingredient Tebethyron. Uh, I know very full well what it's used for and uh, intended use and the potential non-target damage that it can cause when maliciously used like this. Now, did you go to school here at all? You know, I did not. I did my undergraduate at NC State, uh, Masters of Colorado That's a good State, one? University of, a PhD, University of California, Davis. Well, so when you, you, you seem to get emotional there for like a second, which is understandable, which when I, I did as well. But. <laughs> when I came to Auburn, I came all in. Right. I, I, uh, I love this place. I have, uh, I, you know, I'd like to say Auburn has adopted me because I have certainly um, hope I found my way into the family because I love it here. Um, did did you actually hear the fine bomb call at the time by chance? No, I did not. Um, occasionally I listen to the fine bomb show, uh, but not to criticize the fine bomb show, but the callers are very entertaining for the most part. And so I did not hear that when I heard he had said that. I just assumed it was a joke, or assumed it was just a ridiculous, you know, outlandish statement that many of his callers typically make. So I did not think much of it at the time. Uh, luckily, some other people around me did, and immediately moved into action. In this. Um, now, so, so you personally, I guess, you know, when, when did when did you, I guess, were made aware that you know it actually had been poisoned? As soon as the preliminary soil test results came back from Mississippi, uh, I was I was alerted to the problem and immediately uh, joined the the effort. Okay. You seem to be pretty emotional up there when talking. I mean, is there a connection to these trees for you, obviously? Well, I I love Auburn. I, I've been an assistant professor here for three years now. I didn't do my undergraduate here, but uh, when I came to Auburn, I came all in. And I love it here, and I have celebrated many times uh, with friends, family, with the undergraduates uh, after Auburn victories. And it's just an incredible travesty uh, to see this type of malicious act occur. And it kind of breaks my heart to see somebody uh, w so willfully destroy such an incredible cultural landmark for the city of Auburn, for the U Auburn University. Well, is there anything that we, as faculty, people that live in the town, is there anything y'all can put out there for us to know to help maybe protect it? Uh, any any information, like information that we could put out? Um, we put the timely information sheets we've put together. Uh, <laughs> Has that been the first thing to go out? Uh, I have a second uh, version, a second fact uh, that I should be, have finished today uh, with a little bit of additional information. Um, well, they're planning that big tree hug, you know, on <laughs> Saturday. So, just yes. curious. Will hugging actually help? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, this is. Here, give no, me hug the tree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, scientifically, well, I, should stay back and scientifically I can't off. comment on that, but, but to be honest with you, less. Impact below the trees right now would be the best thing for them. What's the impact below the trees? For, no, no, just less. I, impact. I wouldn't want 100 people stomping around the base of those trees, to be honest. Okay. Really? Okay. I don't think that's a good idea. Maybe okay. they should put a little fence or something around the root area. That would, uh, we'd have to talk to Gary Kiefer about that uh, and see whether or not that would be a possibility. Could you give me a number? Was it 100 times the lethal amount? A third of it would have killed a normal tree. We're just hearing you know, little whispers of different numbers. Lots of numbers. Okay, the soil test results, as you know, came back uh, between 0.78 parts per million and about uh, 51 parts per million. We have evidence uh, from other uh, tree poisonings, or essentially uh, roadside studies, that indicated that 100 parts per billion was toxic to some species of oak trees. So uh, 0.78 parts per million would be well above that. Um, and every, uh, every uh, expert I've talked to around the country in, in mentioning uh, rates up to 51 parts per million, they were very discouraged and did not uh, offer a lot of <laughs> hope due to the extremely high concentration. So you, some, some oak trees are, def are susceptible down to 100 parts per billion. If you're handling this stuff like professionally, like somebody who you know knows enough to get this thing, I mean, are you wearing gloves? Are you, uh, I mean, do, are you not getting it on your skin, you need a okay. mask around your face? Okay, in, in general, it's a relatively safe product to use. Um, it is lethal on plants, but relatively safe to humans. Uh, you'd have to look at the label. I think uh, the label might require pants, long sleeve shirt, uh, rope, uh, neoprene rubber gloves. 
Uh, but in terms of requiring a respirator or anything like that, no. No. In terms of dermal toxicity, it's essentially negligible. Uh, it's not been shown to uh, cause any allergic reactions in, in the toxicology testing that has been done. Uh, in terms of uh, acute toxicity, you would have to eat quite a bit of it. A 150-pound male would, would have to consume at least two ounces of the actual product for an adverse effect. Um, if you get it in your eyes, if you washed it out immediately, there would be no problems at all. If you decided to pack it in your eyes and leave it there, yes, you would have some potential eye injury. This herbicide does not volatilize, which means it doesn't turn into a gas. It does not move up into the, into the air. Um, its big issue is solubility, so that uh, when, when uh, rainfall or the water from the washing of the trees occurred, uh, the herbicide solubilized and, and was moved into the soil, uh, so that there would have been minimal exposure uh, essentially no exposure. Basically anyone celebrating out there would have had to have rolled under that tree and eaten several pounds of dirt <laughs> to have any uh, negative uh, issues. Presuming that it was rolled like at the time, would the, would the toilet paper have had any kind of... Well the toilet you know, paper would have been a good buffer would have, yeah, uh, yeah. for people you know even standing upon it. So if you had shoes on you would not have been exposed. But six inches of toilet paper would have been another protective layer. Um, you're asking if the herbicide uh, could have been absorbed by the toilet paper? Or no, I mean just, yeah, if they would have yeah, impacted the absorption or the, I don't know, anything no, out no. there. No, basically from the first uh, rainfall or, or watering of, of those trees, the fire hoses, that, that herbicide would have moved directly into the, the, the soils. What's the process of applying that? Is it like a spray or how long would something like that take? Basically there are multiple, or there are different ways to apply spike ADDF herbicide. Uh, one is a broadcast application rate where you are applying it, say, across a uniform area, say, to the entire, an entire field. Um, broadcast application rates would be five pounds of the product on a per acre basis. So imagine spreading five pounds of material across an entire acre and you can see it's a relatively low amount of material. For, for individual trees there are methods for what are called spot treatments of applying uh, a small concentrated dose of the herbicide directly beneath uh, the tree itself. And that's, in this case that is what the perpetrator did. It's usually applied with water? Yes. This specific product is mixed with water. Applied with water. No we don't know we don't know how he did it. We don't know if he mixed them up in a in a Coke can and just knocked it over out there. We don't know if he sprinkled the, the formulation. It is a dry flowable or a dry formulation. We just don't know. But, um, but in terms of application methods for individual trees, you would use an individual spot type application to control a tree you wanted to, to control. Based on how much was in it, can you tell how much product he had when he did it? Is it like a gallon or can you just really tell that? Basically, it's really difficult to tell based upon the amount of water that has been applied around those trees right. since it, the application allegedly occurred. We don't know how much has already moved into the soil. Uh, the concentrations in the top three inches were extremely hot. That might suggest it hadn't moved much further than that, and hopefully it hasn't, and that's all he's put. But uh, the solubility of the herbicide and the amount of water put on there uh, could suggest it has moved somewhat deeper. And that was in the fall? I believe the Feinbaum caller indicated he did, it, he did it the week after the Iron Bowl. Yeah, it seemed like it was after the yeah, Iron Bowl. Um, so it has been out sitting out there for a couple of months now. What kind of reputation does that particular herbicide have in the, uh, the business? I really can't speak for the industry. Uh, as a unbiased, from the unbiased academic side of things, I, I can't really address how the industry views the herbicide. It is viewed as a very effective herbicide for its purpose. Uh, and we preach incredible caution in the utilization of this for any purpose. Um, I, I'm going to have to ask you, if you can, to repeat it again about the numbers. I know you're a, a lot of this you're going to be repeating a lot.